Tonight is a continuation of the sermon that we started this morning as we talked about light, the importance of light in the physical creation. We talked about that from the book of Genesis, how God created light, then created the sun, the moon, the stars to divide the light from the darkness, how that light is essential for biological life to exist here upon the earth, how that God created us with eyes so that we might be able to see because uh, of light. One of the first things that you do in the middle of the night when you get up to do something is what do you do? You turn on a light so you can see, so you see where you're going. We uh, turn on the lights when the sun goes down so we'll be able to see in the darkness. Uh, We talked about how God is light. His Son is the light of the world. We also talked about how that God's Word is light. Psalm 119 verse 105 tells us that God's Word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. It is within the light of God's Word that we learn that God is light. That we learn about Jesus the Son, who is the light of the world. And from other passages, we also learn that the Word of God is what enlightens our minds. Tonight, I want to talk about light in the fact that God's people are light. We are to be the light in this world. Jesus is no longer in the world. He's in heaven. He's not physically among us. And he tells us that we, as his disciples, as citizens in his kingdom, are to be a source of light. Just as the moon has no light in and of itself, it reflects the sunlight. So we reflect the sunlight, S-O-N, the sunlight of the Son of God in this world. And so the concept of us being light is found in the scriptures, and that's what we're going to explore tonight. Matthew chapter 5, you have the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 14, Jesus said, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now notice what Jesus is saying here. He's using metaphors to describe the people of God. And he says, you are the light of the world. We are to be the lights. Now, Jesus claimed to be the light of the world, the true source of all light, in John chapter 8 and verse 12, where he says, I am the light of the world. But his followers are to be the light of the world as well. He says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You have a city, you see it on a hill, there's no way to hide that. It can be seen from miles around. And so he is saying, concerning our influence, it is to be high profile. There's no such thing as a secret Christian as far as living for Jesus Christ. It's open. It's public. It's high profile, just like a city that is set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. He says in verse 15, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. When you light something, you turn something on, uh, do you stick it under the bed? Do you put it under the couch? Well, of course not. You put it up high so that it can illuminate the entire room. We have lights that are on the ceiling so the whole room can be illuminated. They're either on the ceiling or they're on a lampstand, and that's what he's saying here. Uh, You put it on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. He's saying this is how your influence is to be as a Christian. Your influence is to so shine before men that they see your good works 
and glorify your Father in heaven. See, our good works are the light. That's the light that is being shining, that is shining forth. That men may see that they might glorify the Father in heaven. God's people are to be light in the world. Turn to John chapter 12, verses 35 through 36. Jesus says something very interesting here. John chapter 12, verses 35 and 36. Jesus says in verse 35, He said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. Jesus is saying this light is going to be with you a little bit longer. Earlier in that same chapter, he was talking about how he was going to be killed. He was going to be taken away. He wasn't going to be among them anymore. And he says, while you have that light in the world, that influence of Christ, you are to walk in that light, lest darkness overtake you. You see, when a light goes out, darkness engulfs. See, darkness is the absence of light. And the dimmer and the dimmer a light gets, the more and more the darkness encroaches. And that is true with our influence. The less and less a Christian influence we have in society, the more and more darkness we're going to have in society. He says this darkness can overtake you. And he who walks in darkness does not know where he's going. Uh, The people in darkness, they have no direction. There's no moral compass. They don't know where they are going. He says in verse 36, While you have the light, believe in the light. Notice that you may become sons of light. So we have the light. We have the light of God's word with us now. We are to believe the light so that this light will change us into people of light. The light has to change us so that we will live what we're reading and studying in the light source. It does no good to read and study if we're not going to do what it says. James says you're to be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self in James chapter 1. But we know that faith without works is dead, James chapter 2. And so he he is saying here, when you have the light, you believe in the light so that it will change your life that you may become sons of light, children of light. So we have the message of the light in us and we become the sons of light. We bear that light in our life. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, Paul says, And do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. He says here that... Uh, The salvation that we have is nearer than when we first believed. The day is, uh, the night is far spent. We have to cast off the works of darkness. That would be sin, corruption, evil thinking, the things of the flesh. We've got to get rid of those things. And we are to put on the armor of light. Well, you read in the light, the word of God, the armor that we're to put on. Ephesians chapter 6 talks about putting on the whole armor of God and talks about different aspects of that armor. We have to put that on. We take the light so that we might become the sons of light and we put on that armor of light because there is darkness all around us. We cannot have darkness in us and light at the same time. 
We have to cast off that darkness, whatever sin it might be, so that we can have light in us and put on the armor of light. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 8. <clears throat> Ephesians 5 and verse 8. <clears throat> Paul says in Ephesians 5 and verse 8, he reminds those Christians there at Ephesus <clears throat> that you were once darkness, <clears throat> but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. And remember, Jesus said you become sons of light. When you allow the light to enter into your heart and you believe it, You will become sons of light. And Paul says here that we are to walk, live our life as children of light. And notice he says uh, in the first part of the verse, you were once darkness. You were once lost. You were once in sin. But now you are light. You're Christians now. You're saved. You've been converted. You've been born again. You're light, notice, in the Lord. See, that's the only place light's found, in Christ. Ephesians 1 and verse 3 tells us all spiritual blessings in heavenly places are found in Christ. Ephesians 1 and verse 7 tells us that redemption and forgiveness of sin is found in Christ. And when we are baptized into Christ, we become light in the Lord. We're now in the Lord and we become light bearers. He says, therefore, you walk as children of light. You conduct your life now as children of light. Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16. Philippians 2, verse 14 through 16. Paul says, do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of faith, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Paul is saying you you don't be griping and complaining about serving the Lord. Don't have disputing going on. You be blameless. You be harmless. You're, you're not out to harm anyone. We're always willing to help. We are the children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Does that not describe our generation? Pretty much every generation from the first century to, to this one. Probably more so in the past in the Roman Empire. But the, the, the point is, society at large is a crooked and perverse generation every wholesome institution has those in it that want to corrupt it make it crooked and perverse marriage even the boy scouts they want to make it crooked and perverse they want to make it contrary to the wholesome thing that it has been for many years And therefore, we live in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation that wants to accommodate wickedness of every kind. But we are to shine as lights in the world. We are to set forth the example of this is the right way to live. This is true morality. This is what God wants. This is the will of Christ. We hold fast the word of life. So Paul says, I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain nor labored in vain. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 5. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 5. Paul says, you are all the sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. And so we see here in the pages of the New Testament how that we are to be people of light. We're to be letting our influence shine and affect other people. You think about that when it comes to the things that we do on a a daily basis throughout the week. Think about the workplace. Are you letting your light shine there? Do they know that you're a Christian? 
Do they know that you stand for what is right? Or do you in the workplace put your light under a basket? As so many people do. So many people let that little light shine in the church building. But yet when they go out of the workplace, they'll cover it up. Because they want to fit in to the workplace. They want to fit into that place. And so they cover up their Christian influence. And they diminish their light. How about when you uh, engage in recreation? The things that you do for uh, the time of leisure. Are you letting your light shine when you do that? You choose certain movies. You pick out certain things. Certain television shows. Uh, Think about your light shining as you do that. How about when you're on the internet? Facebook. Are you letting your light shine on Facebook or the social medias? Do they know that you're a Christian? Do they know that you stand for what is right and that you're not going to tolerate on your wall or on whatever you might have anything that is corrupt, whether it's pictures that are corrupt, whether it's language that is corrupt? We're letting our light shine when we say we're not going to have that. We're not going to engage in that. It is so sad to see so many people, even those who claim to be Christian, put on display on Facebook how worldly they really are for all of their friends to see. And we need to realize that we are sons of light, children of light, people of light all the time. Not just sometimes, not when we're around other people of light, but we are to stand out in a dark world, in a dark work world, in the dark school, in the dark society, in the darkness of the entertainment realm. We're to stand out as different, distinct people, letting our light shine. In John chapter 5, as Jesus was describing John the Baptist... He says this about him. John chapter 5, verse 35. He was the burning and shining lamp. And you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. Jesus said of John in Matthew 11 and verse 11, Among those born of women, there is not a greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom is greater than him. As he was remembering John and what John did, he said that that man was a burning and shining lamp. Wouldn't that be wonderful if that could be said of you at the end of your life? If they could say this in your eulogy, As they remember your life at your funeral, could they say, this person was a burning and shining lamp. They let their light shine all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They were always shining forth for Christ. He says in verse 36, John 5 and verse 36, But I have a greater witness than John's. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do, They bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Christ is the greatest light of all. Because all of our light, as bright as we might be, we're imperfect. We have flaws. We have sin that we have to deal with. Jesus was the perfect light. He never sinned, never violated the will of God. He is that perfect example, that perfect light to show us the way. That's why Jesus said in John 14 and verse 6, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So if we hold Him up as our person to follow, as our moral example, as the person that we are to look to, as to how to behave, how to form characteristics within our life, we'll never go wrong. He should be our ultimate role model. Not some sports figure, not some actor, not some musician. Christ should be our ultimate role model because He is the true light. God's people are to be light in the world. If you're not a Christian, you're in darkness right now. You're in darkness, and we urge you to become a Christian and come to the light. 
be translated out of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. And you do that by being born of water and the Spirit to enter the kingdom of God. Believing in Christ, confessing Him, repenting of your sins, and being baptized in water. If you've done that and you've gone astray, you're in darkness. We urge you to come back to the light. Ask God to forgive you and He will. As always, the choice is yours while we stand and while we